Now we just got to start working on the animals that humans kind of... Well, I mean, even, uh, what off. was it, Italy, where the dolphins came back in the bay? Yeah, or? oh my goodness. Yeah. The marine animals are slowly coming back. Because now all of fishing and, and cruise ships are gone, so there's, yeah. like, places to swim. Uh, I, I mean, I really hope that that's the hey, result. An, if animals are, will, are able to slowly come back, humans can actually slowly I, come back. I hope that... At, I just, I really hope this is a learning moment for the world, right? Like this yeah. is like this is the hopefully it would change. Yeah, yeah. At the very least, people wash their hands more, maybe. Who knows? Also for the system, because there's no reason to play like soccer player, like million, million, million. Oh, would that be amazing to see money like move move from like the rich to the to like the people who need it? Yeah, I, I read a new article every day about basic income, uh, like basic living income and stuff. It's been really successful in the countries that tried it. It's like the idea that every person is given a minimum amount of money that would pay for their rent and pay for their... $50 million per year. Messi. Messi. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, don't even get me started on, on, on like celebrity... Yeah, um, that The celebrity athletics, yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> but then you get, uh, well, <laughs> actors aren't the greatest, but I mean, you so get people like Keanu. He sure. actually sends it back to his mother. He doesn't spend it for himself, he yeah. gives a large portion. back to his mother. I mean, I think, I mean, I think for one of the Matrix movies, he gave all the money to the crew. Because yeah. like he, he felt like he was, he already, he, he gave a big portion of his profits to the crew because he said, "Oh, they're the ones who made this movie good." Freaking Canadians. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Vegas too. Vegas. Yeah, Vegas was a. Yeah. 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 Okay, we talked a lot about acids oh, okay. uh, the other day. I don't know if I posted this you book. Didn't post it ah, that's what I, I just realized as I was doing as I was looking through this. I'm like, hmm, this does like, not look familiar. Same to, too. Yeah, uh, yeah. I do see book two is posted, but not book one. So let's just uh, here's our booklets. I'm gonna post it right now. So if you're at home and you don't have this booklet, you'll be getting it in your inbox in one second. This will be chemistry. My phone will be going off too. Booklet three. Add. Drive. Another breaking news. Let's see if it works. Oh, Justin threw those on right now. We are. We'll do a live stream of a live stream. Okay, that's got everything. Okay, uh, and I did not share the live stream either. Maybe that's uh, that's why we have less people today. Uh, the other thing I might try is uh, there uh, is a, I'm just doing too many things at the same time, uh, <laughs> is, um, I might try uh, try this thing called Microsoft Teams. Apparently, it's uh, it's also very good. Or there's another one called Google Hangouts, and we can create that, and it can be like a like a living chat room kind of thing. It's essentially chat rooms. So I guess we can make a subreddit or something, <laughs> so, but or a Discord. Um, so uh, that would be a place where we could uh, we could have like a, an ongoing conversation. And so like if you wanted to get reach out to me uh, at any time. Apparently with Google Teams, you can even have it so it, it's like accessible by text message, but I don't see your phone numbers, you don't see mine. Um, so that way you can kind of shut me off whenever you want, or I also am not contacting you when you don't want to be contacted. So that would be another idea that we'll play around with. And I oh. think with Hangouts, you just give your, it's your... Just a Google account, account, right? Yeah, yeah so I'll, Gmail I'll, account. Yeah, and I can just essentially give you a code that you can load, you can hook up to. I can send that through the classroom as well. And so that will be probably what will happen. 
maybe I'll set that up today so that tomorrow, if uh, anybody didn't get it to work, then we can. And work with I it. think with that social media, uh, Facebook, they have a team team chat or whatever. Yeah, yeah. There's a we could do a Facebook Live, I guess, but they're a little bit. You know, little then we have to get yeah, Facebook involved, and it, that's yeah. a little bit more personal. Wait, are we gonna flip flop to the info? So we're just gonna stick with. We're gonna finish this book. Uh, well, we'll probably finish this book this week. It's a pretty mm -hmm. short book. Yeah, and then this next, the next two weeks or the next three weeks, I guess, will be for ecology. Mm -hmm. So I'd like you to read through the ecology book in the next three weeks, and then I'll also assign some videos on the classroom that I should, that I'd like you to watch, uh, or I'll also make some recommendations for Netflix and for I'll try to look at the other streaming sites I don't have, but I'll check them all and sort of. See which ones would be good uh, good documentaries to watch to get you in the right mindset, and uh, and then uh, probably a writing assignment, and try to keep it try to keep it low. I don't I don't think anybody who's anybody's stuck at home, and if you've got kids or whatever you got to take care of, it's like it's very difficult. I'm not. I'm hoping they actually don't make me stay, make me go home. That would be better for me. It's not to go home because I could at least get work done if I'm here. Um, but if they tell me I have to work from home next week, uh, the videos will be very different. <laughs> It'll be a lot of like, go away, go away, you know, so. Um, yeah, I know all the kids are home. My wife's at a school that's empty right now. Yeah, the first time I heard about it, yeah. this was, it was going to be closed. I was in one of the classes, I, I almost, I felt the tears. Yeah. I felt sadness. I was like, okay, for one thing, the, we go to class, the teachers aren't going to be able to to us or see us. I'm like, what the? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I was just. Well, that's one thing that, that a Google team, uh, the Google chats, like Google Hangouts, I can see you at least if, yeah. uh, if we do it as a video, like a Hangout. That might be better for our class, particularly. Um, all right. Uh, the one thing we missed was a definition for alkaline yesterday. So I just wanted to pop that in there. Yeah. This just means uh, at any, uh, any, um, hmm solution, I guess, which is a, a mixture of water and something, any solution with a pH over 7. And that we'll talk about, uh, which is a basic solution. It's, uh, it's not really particularly, it's not a great definition because we just said the bases are also described as alkaline, but um, it is one of the, it is the, uh, the definition we so, I'm going to do some bit of shrinking here. This is large one. Uh, the interesting thing I've always found about, uh, about bases versus uh, acids is that bases are actually a lot more dangerous for our bodies. Um, in general, uh, even a weak base can cause some damage, like washing your hands with some soap. If you lose uh, too strong a soap, you can damage your hands, or you can get some red rashing and things like that. Meanwhile, uh, with acids, we you know we ingest lots of acids all the time. We ingest our stomach has stomach acid. You pointed out the other day. That's like on the bottom of the scale. Like it's at like one point six or something, and the scale only goes to, to one, so or zero, I guess. But you know, it it only goes so low, and uh, we have one of the essentially one of the strongest solutions of acid you can make in your stomach, and your body can handle it. And it's just the difference in the chemical nature of your body. Proteins in general are a little bit more hardy towards acids and a little less hardy towards bases. Bases are a little bit more of a, bases tend to steal, acids kind of add, so. That's yeah, fine. plus I was thinking about that case, stomach acid, mm -hmm. so strong it could actually beat other acids, but it's in a light thing like your stomach, doesn't, Eat away at the, eat at that, doesn't eat at the blood around it. Yeah, so that we do have a regenerating, it does eat away your stomach, but the, the stomach is, has a quickly regenerating uh, surface, plus it's got uh, mucus in there. And so the mucus, uh, the mucus has some base in it, which neutralizes some of the acid effect. And so the acid can't quite, it can't hit the skin with all of its force. And then the, the, the layers of tissue there, I guess they're not skin, but whatever type of tissue it is escaping me now. Me, John, about, uh, my family used to, we have a problem in the stomach, we say, oh, drink me. We drink. don't know yeah. it. It's because uh, basic with acid, so 
Yeah. Well, I, it's, uh, the weird thing is, I always thought the milk was basic, but it's actually acidic because of the lactic acid. Um, it's just that it's very close to like natural, uh, natural pH. So it's not. It honestly, uh, honestly, most of the time, if you have a very strong acid, you don't really want to mix the base with it because the reaction is very aggressive. So you actually kind of you. That's why sometimes um, mixing it with like something like milk. The, it's, a, it's just a little bit acidic, not not very strongly acidic. So then it, it kind of brings it from the bottom up to the midpoint. Instead of trying to mix like something very very basic, very acid, and trying to hope that you hit the middle, you could uh, you could end up on either end so very easily. So starting so taking a lot of milk with some acid will bring it up towards the milk, which is close to your natural pH. So. Now your blood is a is a little tiny ba bit basic. Uh, your blood is seven point three, I believe. So blood is just the tiniest bit basic. It has quite a few salts dissolved in it, and salts tend to make your and make solutions acid or basic. So uh, that's also where the alkaline comes from. Is that they found that any any solution that they dissolved any of the alkaline metals, uh, either the alkaline earth or the alkali metals, they found that those solutions became basic. And so they first identified bases as the same, having the same properties as things that had these metals in them. And then they went back and they realized, oh, there's this thing called a base. And now this is a better definition. Let's call them bases. But they still sometimes talk about alkaline solutions. Um, I think I still hear it in like the batteries. batteries, alkaline batteries. Yeah, based on alkaline batteries, they're using uh, these metals here. Uh, I've done, I think I have, uh, I have two booklets on the printer. There should be a couple more copies of that dynamics, mm -hmm. and then one of the uh, physics, uh, five of the physics books. Yeah, yeah, in the library, please. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna make them, make those binders break under the weight of all these booklets. Yeah, mine's already breaking. We're only done the first unit. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, so these products are particularly nasty on your uh, on your proteins. Uh, even just a little bit basic is uh, pretty nasty stuff. Uh, lye is famously used in like murder mystery movies. They they oh put God, a body in, in the old days. put a body in the in a pit and then you pour a bunch of lye on top of it and then you put a bunch of dirt and the body will disappear um, as like it's a solid that turns into an acid. Yeah, it turns base. Lye turns into a base. So, is, this, is this page six? Uh, yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah, I think it's uh, yeah, mine I get it, it, it went over the edge, but that's oh, okay. yeah, so there's common bases. Is that what it says? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, mine doesn't have the sodium, miss the nice sodium, yeah, and then that's great. <laughs> and then you guys can take these physics ones, you do not have to look at them yet. Um, I have instructed Matthew to start building uh, some uh, videos to help you get through the physics unit so Is that we can start it slip? right when we get back. Oh, there's so much, so much and fun. Other now. stuff? Uh... Yeah, but that's for the future. Don't worry about that. Don't, you know, if you want to attempt this one on your own, then you know, feel free. But uh, this, uh, this one will, have, will, will hopefully be coming back and starting this unit. This is probably the most challenging unit, and now that we don't know how much time we're going to get when we get back, I'm going to keep this one here now, so you can kind of get started on it. I'll post it as well in the classroom, so if uh, you need to. Uh, so let's see. Uh, now the bases don't have quite as many uses. Um, I don't. I just noticed that. Yeah, your yours has. This here, and I see that on yours you have sodium hydroxide up there, right? Mm -hmm. So this is one of the polyatomic ions we do need to know, which is the OH ion. So this is the hydroxide. So the general naming of uh, bases is to have this hydroxide part. So calcium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide. It's just ionic naming, right? Many, many, many of the bases are ionic compounds. Generally, I can only think of, I can't even think of one right now. That, oh, I guess ammonia is like the only one I can think of that's not a 
uh, not an ionic compound. Potassium sulfite, I guess, is a, well, it's still ionic. So they're all ionic compounds, um, and they all have different properties. This is, uh, this is Li. Uh, actually, Li is a general name for all of these, all of these ones here. These are all, all types of Li. <coughs> As is the tradition of like poor of the poor name the poor naming conventions of the past. They just kind of use one general name for a whole bunch of compounds that all have the same property. Uh, potassium is also known as potash. Potash, and uh, I think it's used in soil sometimes. Uh, It's a potassium-rich salt that's mined underground in deposits uh, from evaporated seabeds millions of years ago. Uh, so it's a group of chemicals. It's used in fertilizer. Uh, calcium hydroxide is uh, useful for dental application. It's, it's used in dentistry. Sodium hydroxide is used as a cleaner. Sometimes also known as caustic soda. Mm -hmm. Apparently, uh, used in soaps. So used in soaps. Found in soap. Rayon, paper, explosives, petroleum products. There's quite a few uses there. Aluminum hydroxide is used for upset stomachs, so it's uh, it's one of the ones that we can use. Uh, it's like sort of Pepto Bismol style, yeah. Pepto Bismol is a little bit different, but I have seen it in like ghost white pill forms. Yeah, aluminum hot. Like I can, I have an example here of an aluminum hydroxide gel here that you can buy. Um, so it's a medication you can get off the shelf. Antacids. Oh yeah, here, look, this, uh, yeah, I've definitely seen this sold in stores, right? Aluminum hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide. So it's an antacid. Antacid. And you have to watch out with antacids. You are ingesting a base. So if you take too much, you can push yourself to the other side of the scale. So you might be having an acid re reaction, but if you drink too much base, you might push yourself above pH 7, and that can feel uncomfortable too. So definitely don't want to act too, uh, take too, too much of that stuff. Ammonium hydroxide is uh, found in ammonium. Uh, is, uh, is, found, is actually the, the result of mixing ammonia and water. So sometimes when you find um, uh, <coughs> ammonia, you can, uh, if you're bu if you're buying ammonia cleaner, then you sometimes yeah, will see it powerful. listed as ammonium hydroxide. It's 
It's also used in a lot of other sources. It's um, it has used in plastics and fertilizers and textiles, all sorts of uses. Sodium bicarb we talked about that yesterday. That's the type that you uh, find in your shelf for cooking. To, and I don't know if anybody's ever try, ever added too much baking soda to a cake or too much baking soda to a <laughs> to some muffins and you get that sort of bitter taste to it. Or it can sometimes taste metallic. That metallic part that you're tasting, that's the base, that's the too much base. So one of the properties of bases was a bitter flavor. And so having too much uh, bicarb <laughs> I remember the uh, we when we first got our condo, we had the, there was a very nice lady downstairs who bought us who brought us some cookies and uh, an invitation to her church. And then we went to go and we're like, oh great cookies! We go to eat them. And we're like, ooh, mm, just a little bit too much baking soda. Like you really can taste it. Uh, sulfite. Let's see, what are some uses of that? I don't know. Uh, okay, so this is a, pres pres a preservative. Preserve foods. <coughs> Preserve food. So it looks like it's used in food and drink uh, as a pres as a preservative. Yeah, it can be used as um, it it does it can be used for uh, for fire uh, fighting as well, like for for fire reduction because the uh, the, the potassium bicarb has a side benefit that it decomposes into CO two. But that takes energy, so you can throw a bunch of this on like some on a fire, on like an electrical fire or an oil fire, and when you throw the the sodium bicarb, it starts to break down into CO two, and that uses up energy in the fire. So then the the fire loses energy and it can put it out. Yeah. And you get CO two, which to, which displaces oxygen, so you don't have any oxygen. Yeah, because a lot of people say if there's a grease fire or something, mm. they use water. Just yeah. So they keep so on it. Yeah, the water doesn't take very much energy to turn into a steam, and then it starts to, you know, and it doesn't like the oil very much. Yeah. Yeah. So but this. If you put say, baking soda on it, yeah. it'll actually absorb that energy. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. I'm glad we figured that out. I kind of started with making that up on the spot. Now I'm like, now I'm pretty convinced. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Sometimes it's helpful because the the bicarb has like some grit to it, so that's really good for getting like a good scrub on. And then when you start to react in, although when you react in, you're getting you're actually getting you know a neutral solution at the end. But if you as you as it reacts, you uh, you get a lot more bubbles, and bubbles are good at at uh, collecting dirt off of it. So yeah, I definitely have used that for cleaning. Um, at my like my nighttime retainer or whatever is is good for getting that scale off and stuff. Is it also to, to take out rust? Yeah, taking out rust. Yeah, the, the there's a there's a reaction with rust there that can uh, dissolve rust, I believe. I think it might be from the vinegar side, but yeah. Okay, sometimes yeah. people use say WD forty for loosening things. I found it to be a good rust remover. That's about it. Yeah, uh, WD forty is I think is actually a better is a solvent, so it actually it's not very good. It does it does loosen it, but it usually loosens it by removing the rust. Yeah, and then it actually leaves your gears uh, dry, so they can actually wear out faster. So yeah, you're supposed to apply a, an oil afterwards. But that's a little bit different. That's a different sort of chemistry. So that's dissolving, which is uh, is its own sort of wing of uh, of stuff to to the study. But it's uh, but those are good observations. Sometimes dissolving is because of an acid reaction. So formulas, so almost all acids have a formula that starts with hydrogen or ends with COOH. This is the only one that's weird. 
So that, that's a, uh, so there are quite a few acids that end in this one and that's COH, but there's a, but a lot of them start with a hydrogen. So for example, um, so for example, we have uh, H2SO4, so H2SO4, that's hydrogen sulfate, or that's a sulfuric acid. We have uh, HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, or and there's a bunch of other ones. There's hydrochlorite acid or chlor hydrochlorous acid, and a bunch of uh, other ones like that. Um, acetic acid is CH3COOH. This is called acetic acid. That's also one that's carrying an old name with it, but hasn't been changed ever since, so I'm stuck with it. Many bases end with OH, but there are a few that don't. So such as those ending in carbonate, or those with the hydrogen carbonate or ammonia, um, or even ammonia, which is its own base. So bases are a little bit trickier to figure out without knowing. Uh, you can have a bunch of different carbonates too. You can have sodium carbonate. So for example, and uh, so Na2CO3, this is sodium carbonate. We had the bicarb, or the uh, what did we call it earlier? Sodium bicarbonate. That was also another base. So that's another one. So when I talk about acids and bases, uh, the way I think about water is impacts my way I explain an acid and base. So H two O is what we say for water, right? But if you put two oxygens together, then you get oxide. <coughs> Correct, yeah. And then, but when we draw out uh, H2O, what actually ends up happening in a liquid, like water, is that the hydrogens get a little bit confused. They don't actually know which, which oxygen is theirs. And so they end up sort of creating this kind of web of, of hydrogens and oxygens and that's one of the reasons that water has all of its very interesting properties so um it's because the this is sort of a web the, the hydrogens are so small and so positively charged that they just go they just go with the flow they're like oh there's an oxygen oh no wait maybe that's my oxygen they're kind of like that um that uh dory. yeah dory there we go yeah they're like dory and that you know this is a bunch of marlins or whatever and uh so they so this creates this web. This is one of the reasons we get things like um, like that property. If anybody's ever seen this penny test, it's pretty cool. Is uh, let me see if I can uh, water on a penny. I get a gif. I just saw this yesterday, so it's very fun. So here is an example. Uh, this is a penny, and they are adding water to it, just one drop at a time. And so one of the amaz amazing things here is to look at the edge, right? Notice how the water is actually stretched out over the edge of the penny, and so that's that is a that is a direct result of this sort of webbing that's happening. Is this oxygen, hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen bonding? that's happening is allowed the penny to actually stretch beyond the edge of the, of the penny. And the reason also we get this sort of this, uh, like a, like droplets. And this is like a unique property to water. It's, it, there are other chemicals that have some of this bonding, ethanol, but if we used ethanol, we would not get nearly as many drops. Water is one of the only compounds that can do this very effectively. And so, uh, and you can watch this. Great, right. like is, they keep adding and adding and adding. Oh, oh. 
Oh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, gift cat. <laughs> Great. Yeah, that was. I guess I won't try that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping it would get to the. Ed. There's one where it stops at the edge. It actually goes over the edge. That's what I was looking for. Well, that's very frustrating. <laughs> I'll have to, I, I usually don't go in and edit my videos, but maybe I'll have Here is a penny floating in water. And you can see how the water actually like dips down, but not like, but can actually hold the penny up as it floats and you get like a dip in there. So uh, those are all possible that probably. Work with pennies or they work with others? It could work with other things if it's, if it's light enough. I mean, boats work that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah kind of, right? Yeah, you're putting... But it is always interesting to kind of see that it's actually yeah. below the surface, which is a little weird. A penny is made out of what? Copper? Usually copper. Ours are made out of mostly zinc now, but they used to be made mostly, uh, they used to have copper. Um, zinc's cheap. Copper became, once we started putting wires in our houses, they, copper prices went up. <coughs> okay. So uh, this this web uh, creates some, uh, some of the interesting properties. And then if we take this little web, so I'm gonna I'm gonna draw my little web out here. In this case, we still should have exactly two for every every hydrogen, right? So one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, I just need one more. So we do still have like one water, one water, one water. Um, let's do okay. one water, one water, one water. So we always do have H2O, but if we add a base or an acid, let me just make another one, or a base, what happens is we end up adding, we're gonna add another hydrogen, right? So if we add a base like this, so if we add HCl, something like that, we're gonna add another hydrogen and that disturbs the network. We're gonna get an extra bond. And that chlorine is also gonna disturb the network a little bit. It's gonna make some bonds with the hydrogens as well. And so that disruption changes the properties of the water. That's really all it is. It's just one disruption. You add an OH group, like from, you add an OH, then all of a sudden you get a whole new thing. And this OH group typically stays together, so it actually kind of makes an extra disruption to the water. That it, it still attracts to the hydrogens, but it's got its own little partner H that follows it around, and it doesn't really let that one go as much. And there's some sort of sodium down here somewhere. Uh, some oxygen connections and so this the so each of these uh each of these hydrogens and hydroxides is breaking the equilibrium you can't draw these we can't actually draw these nice little uh groupings of uh, uh two hydrogens to an oxygen anymore and we end up in a new setup that makes the the equilibrium a lot more dynamic a lot more exciting so the reaction we have here is that uh, of water, let's do H2O. So H2O can break down into H plus plus OH minus. And this is a process that happens in both directions. <coughs> uh, this is called the auto ionization of water, which is a very fancy term for this reaction that happens two ways. And it looks like that. So each water molecule has the ability to sort of, at some times, you've got, you know, sometimes this hydrogen's by itself, sometimes this water is by itself, this, this OH is by itself, sometimes it has a friend, sometimes, you know, it doesn't have a friend. It depends on who's moving where. In a liquid, everything's moving all the time. So these, we have to kind of put these all in little balls that are flying around. And then when you start to interfere with this by adding adding more of this or more of that, then the shifting is changed. Yeah, but the way it is right now, it's balanced. 
Right. And then, yeah, so it's balanced right now. And then when you add an asset, you end up, you know, changing this. So it's not as balanced. And so now it's more dynamic, more exciting. You add a base, you add something, something changes. If you add equally base and acid, you can keep the equilibrium. So that's one of the solutions for whether you, when you have spilled a lot of acid, one of the options is to add some base to it and you can neutralize. You can, you can try to balance out the amount of H pluses you just threw on the floor with the, with the amount of OHs. I guess I'm kind of like gas stations when they spill someone spilled gas and they can spill that stuff. To yeah, I believe that might be an absorbent yeah. thing to yeah. just yeah. kind of suck it up. Yeah. Cause it. yeah, most, uh, most, most gases and gasoline fuels are not particularly acidic. So, but it's the case, similar idea. Yeah, like definitely in our in our labs, we'll always have like a big container of sodium bicarbonate, which is a base. And if we're ever working with any acids, we throw a bunch of that on there if we spill anything, and then that'll help you clean it up, and that'll neutralize the reaction, and you can test the like, test it. Like during races, okay, when a person's in the pits. Yeah, they spilled the gasoline, mm -hmm. but they put something on it right away. Mm -hmm. That'll just be an absorbent. They have like these absorbent sheets and stuff that can absorb a, like a ton of chemical. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's just check the stream, see if anybody's there. Somebody's got something. So acids and bases are chemicals that dissolve in water to change this equilibrium, either adding more hydrogens or adding hydroxides. Too much of either creates a dangerous situation. So that's why we have dangerous acids and dangerous bases. The amount of hydrogen ions is measured on what is known as the pH scale, which is pouvoir d'hydrogène, French scale. Yeah. Um, what's pouvoir in French? Strength, power. Yeah, so power d'hydrogène, what would that be? The hydrogen. Yeah, the hydrogen power scale. That sounds way better than pH scale. <laughs> so, so that's the, the hydrogen power scale. Uh, that's what we could call it. So uh, this is French for the, the uh, hydrogen power uh, scale. So the power of hydrogen. So the more hydrogens you have, the more power you have. Now, if you now in an equilibrium, these work kind of like a like a little bit of a scale. So if you start adding OHs, what you actually will end up doing is sucking out the hydrogens. So you'll use up lots of these hydrogens. So that's why that a base, what a base really is doing is lowering the number of hydrogens, and an acid is increasing it. So that's why that's why we can use one scale to describe the whole thing, even though one produces this and one produces that. By producing this, you lose these. It's like a balance, you need balance. Pure water lands at a seven, and the scale goes from one to 14. There are some really wild examples that go beyond 14 and go beyond, beyond one, but those are like pretty rare. So seven is, uh, is pure water, it doesn't really, it doesn't conduct electricity very well. It doesn't, uh, it's not dangerous, right? So, but when we do, when we add an acid, that scale will go down towards one. When we add a base, it'll go up towards 14. And you can actually see a nice little scale on the front of your booklet. But I think we have a we have a scale here. Right? Let's just go look at the scale as we are almost out of time here. So you can see the scale, stomach acid here, really low down on that scale, 1.5. Uh, meanwhile, things like bleaches and ammonia and drain cleaner are up in the 13s, uh, 11, above 10. Milk, water, blood, all sort of in that nice little range there. Um, coconut water is like right around 7.2 or something there's i remember reading something about how you could use coconut water in an extreme situation as like as uh, saline fluid if you're like on an island and you got cut i wonder if that's true What's the I don't know, sure, sometimes they sure freaking taste good yeah 
Oh, that's pH is way too low for the being used like that. That must have been a rumor. Okay. Oh, something my something someone always told me was like, oh, coconut water is like. Well, I've heard that coconut water was used as a uh, as intravenous fluid at one point. Well, this like I mean, so. not going to survive off water. Well, well, it was like an extreme you like can, if you needed fluids. Milk. Yeah, so coconut milk is actually up here somewhere. It's around co coffee level. Yeah, six point seven is what you got. Six point one two seven. Okay, yeah, so that's like right in between normal rain and water and milk. Uh, well, rain mostly falling down, falling down. It usually picks up some dirt on the way, and it usually is a little bit acidic. Uh, but that's just normal rain, right? Acidic yeah. rain would probably be in like the threes or fours. So that would be that would be acidified rain. This is just normal rain. Uh, normal everyday water, like out in the neighbor, out, out walking around, is not not going to be uh, seven. It will be something else. As soon as you start dissolving something in water, whether it's rocks or dirt or anything. The pH was probably not going to be seven. It's very difficult to be seven a pH of seven with something dissolved in it. <coughs> yeah, it'll be more or less. Well, it'll depend what you add. Um, one of the options for right now, we have a lot of problems at like Lake Winnipeg, where the water is too acidic, and that acidic water is really good for algae, but not for much else. So algae love that acidic water and they start growing really fast. And then as they grow, they, they use up all the oxygen in the water. And then there's no oxygen dissolved in the water. So the fish don't have anything to breathe. So the fish essentially suffocate and the fish rates go down in the lake. So one of the solutions is to take uh, limestone and throw it in. And this is called liming a lake. Um, and limestone is made out of a, out of a carbonate. And carbonates are the base of acidic. So, test for 10 minutes ago. There's oxygen inside the carbonate. Yeah, but in carbonates, if you just look at your at your types of, of compounds, what is carbonate? Is it an acid or a base? Base, yeah. So carbonates uh, land in the types of bases. You can see we described uh, Right here, we said that if it has the carbonate name, it's a base, most base and carbonate. So limestone is a type of carbonate. By adding, by trucking in a bunch of limestone and throwing it in the lake, we can actually, uh, we can bring the acidic lake pH back up. So we can bring it up by mixing a base in with uh, that acidic lake. By the way, John, yes. so the pH found in the by mistake, we used to drink uh, by mistake, you know, and uh, you know they gave us uh, our farm. They gave us uh, milk, mm. and you know it's amazing with all knowledge about. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, wow. Hopefully it wasn't that. It wasn't nearly it. Like I mean, this is full strength bleach. Like you can, you can dilute it and probably to a safer point. But yeah, you definitely do not want to. Don't want to play around with that too much. Yeah, but sometimes you could dilute. And acid with, with water. Yeah, I mean that's the that's the number one strategy. If if you have no other chemicals but water, always just use water. Like dilute, dilute, dilute. But water is just uh, lighter acid. Yeah, but water is at seven, right? Yeah. So when we, so for example, if I mix an equal amount of water with an equal amount of stomach acid, I should get you know something like three. As my average, not I won't. My pH will go up to three. So if you know you, if you came across a bunch of lemon juice, uh, you know on your on the ground, and you're worried, or you know lemon juice on your on uh, if you had like a stainless steel countertop or something, and there's someone poured a bunch of lemon juice, and you didn't want to just wipe it up, it might be better off to add some water to it first, or to use a wet cloth, wash it off because that will bring the pH up to meet. You can, and the more water you use, the more it'll bring the pH up towards the water. So where so would like stuff like Windex be? Windex might be an alcohol, which is kind of on a separate. Uh, the alcohols just work on a different principle. They don't work on just being acidic. Okay. Or basic. Um, if it has a cleaner in it, it's probably going to be basic. Yeah. So uh, a lot of our cleaners have that. Have that. Because yeah, they carry around. Yeah, and uh, we use a lot of bases because they do break down proteins. 
So if you think about what's on your countertops and stuff, it's usually like leftover, leftover animal product. Like, you know, like if you like were cutting meats or whatever, you got some protein there or uh, proteins and proteins and uh, fats are very similar. So if it breaks down protein, it probably also breaks down fat. And so the, and, and bases definitely break down fats very good. So if you have like oils or, you know, you spill some, some uh, olive oil or you've got some butter on the table or whatever, a soap, a, a, you're going to be able to use a less strong base to clean that up than you would have than if you used a strong acid. Um, now, I mean, vinegar actually does serve as a pretty good cleaner if you're, if you're in a bind. Yeah. And so vinegar is somewhere in here, I believe it's about 2.5, but you're almost at the bottom of the scale before it starts to be a good cleaner. Yeah, it's not, not many people are cleaning up their food with apples. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. sugar in there, so that's probably why. But, you know, uh, but meanwhile, any of these like, you know, baking soda, borax, milk and magnesia, like in this area is really where like hand soap is already. And it's already good enough at cleaning. So you don't actually have to go very strong into the base <laughs> section before it's useful. Okay, but out. with citric acid cake, I'll be up it, here. it's diluted with water. Right. Yeah, and so you have the orange juice diluted with water, but then you have the citric acid of the pulp yeah. in it also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so it can be, there's a lot of fun stuff we can do later about measuring the acids, and we'll play around with that at another date. It looks like we're out of time for today, but uh, thanks for joining us online there, and we'll we talk to you also day. in class. One more day. One more Next day. week, I'll be doing the live stream still, whether they're going to be here or at home. Uh, I might even do an experiment online, I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Maybe with the niche, you're going to get like page seven or. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to end. Uh, yeah, I mean, 